Step 4. Eavesdropper detection. In the previous step, we have seen how the ideal protocol works. Now let's see what happens when we include the effect of an eavesdropper trying to gain uh, access to uh, the secret key that Alice and Bob are trying to generate. So we've got the following scenario. We've got our Alice communicating over a public uh, quantum channel with Bob, and there is some third party Eve that wants to intercept their messages. So, what can, what can Eve do? Let's assume that she can take these uh, qubits that Alice is sending over the public quantum channel to Bob, she intercepts them, she, can she copy them and then resend them to Bob? That would give her access to, mm, to the protocol and the qubits and also subsequently the secret quantum key. Luckily, she cannot do that due to the no cloning theorem as we have seen in uh, the previous lesson in the teleportation lesson. So, she cannot simply take them, make a copy of the qubit, and then resend uh, the qubits to Bob. That's good. So, in order for Eve to gain any access um, into the information that Alice is trying to share with Bob, she has to measure these qubits. So, what can happen then? She has to guess the basis of measurement, because remember, the preparation basis uh, stored in the bit string B is still kept a secret by Alice. That has not been communicated over a public uh, classical channel to Bob. Therefore, uh, Eve does not have access to this information. So, in order to measure these qubits, she just has to pick a random basis. But she knows that the basis, the, the two choices for the basis is either Z or X. So, if she measures in some basis, this has a chance to disturb the qubit. For example, if Alice prepares the qubit in the X basis and Eve measures in the X basis, then we have seen that in such a scenario there is no disturbance. The qubit is pr still projected onto the same state that it was prepared in, so it doesn't change the state of the qubit and it doesn't change the basis of the qubit. However, in the second case, let's say that Alice's uh, preparation basis is Z and Eve's measurement basis in, is X. So, the qubit originally prepared by Alice was either in a zero state or a one state. These are just two possible states in the Z basis. But by measuring them in the X basis, Alice is now projecting onto the either plus state or a minus state. So, she disturbed the both basis and the state. Similarly, in this scenario here, where Alice, is prepared, Alice prepares in the X basis and Eve measures in the Z basis. And this is the basis, uh, this is the main principle how Alice will be detected by Alice and Bob. So, if she guesses wrong, if Eve guesses wrong, she will change the basis of the qubit. So, let's see what happens. Alice prepares her qubits. She starts sending them over the public uh, quantum channel. Eve intercepts these qubits and she measures them in a random basis. And then she passes on these qubits uh, to Bob. So, some of these qubits where she guesses correctly, uh, so she measures in the preparation basis, they do not, get, do not get disturbed. But some of these qubits, represented by these black qubits, they become disturbed. This is when Alice measures in a different basis than the preparation basis. Then, this gives uh, Alice and Bob an opportunity to, to detect that there is an eavesdropper present. How does that happen? Basically, what they need to do is they go through uh, with their uh, BB84 protocol, they compare their bases in which uh, Alice prepared and Bob measured, they keep only those bits where they measure the qubits in the same basis. And then they uh, dedicate a portion of this new shorter key to finding, uh, to detecting an eavesdropper Eve. So Eve has a chance of measuring in the same basis as the preparation basis of one half, so 50%. And also Bob chooses the same basis as Alice with probability 50%. So this gives Alice and Bob a probability of one quarter to detect an existence of Eve. Because remember, 
if Al is prepared in one basis and Bob measured in the same basis, they are expecting this classical uh, measurement outcomes to be the same. In, they are expecting to share a perfectly correlated key. But if Alice uh, measured this qubit and disturbed this qubit, then there is a chance that uh, these two uh, bits will not coincide. And if they don't coincide, then Bob and Alice know that something went wrong and there is a pre uh, eavesdropper present trying to gain access to their secret key. So we said that uh, Alice can be detected with probability one quarter when it comes to measuring a single qubit. When there's n qubits that she measures, the overall probability of uh, detecting Alice is given by the following expression, one minus three quarter to the power of n. So let's see how this scales with the number of n. Here it is. On the horizontal axis, we're plotting the length of a bit string that we dedicated to detecting an eavesdropper Eve. And on the vertical axis, we've got the probability of detecting Eve. So you see, as the number is very small, so we don't, small n is very small, we don't dedicate too many bits to actually trying to detect the eavesdropper, then also the probability that uh, Eve is detected is relatively small. But very quickly, this probability shoots very close to one. So with nearly uh, a probability of 100%, Alice and Eve can detect the presence of an eavesdropper. Even for uh, n equals to 25, so if they dedicate 25 bits to detect Alice, the chance is one in a thousand that Eve will not be detected. So it's very, very small. Meaning, with very high probability, Alice and Bob know that somebody's eavesdropping onto their channel, so they can just say, we know that we are not sh sharing a, se a secure secret key, therefore we choose not to continue with the rest of uh, our communication, and we don't uh, allow Eve to gain access to our sensitive uh, uh, message.